Olá, Deus te abençoe. Hello, God bless you. Thank God. Welcome to the Life Change Today program. Thank you so much for being there. And may God bless you immensely in everything. With many favor. I pray for favor. Pray you too for favor. I pray for God to give you favor and for your family. May you find favor wherever you go. May this be your prayer continually, daily. Lord, give me favor. Go with me. And may I find favor. Raise people to favor me. Lord, open ways, giving me favor. Favor me. Learn to pray for everything, wherever you go, wherever you're going to do. Ask for God to go with you. For Him to be with you, giving you favor. Cry out the blood of Jesus. Always do everything in Jesus' name. I will go in Jesus' name. I will find favor in Jesus' name. My children are blessed in Jesus' name. My home is blessed in Jesus' name. I am a blessed person in Jesus' name. And everything I do works in Jesus' name. Declare it. Prophesy it over difficult situations. Declare the victories you want. Declare blessings upon you, upon your home. My children will be powerful in, on the earth. In Jesus' name, everything I do will prosper. I am ahead and not the tail. I'm always at head on the top and not under. Blessings follow me. Happy Monday to you. May the blessings of the Lord flow and may you be favored in everything. In Jesus' name, God loves you. Did you say it today? You need it. Don't forget it. Remember what I always say. Prepare your mind every morning. Don't leave your mind thinking in foolish things. Wake up, sleep out of the bed, talk to God, surrender everything to Him, and trust in God. Always say every morning, God loves me. God loves you. You are son, daughter, you are loved. And if you are there, you really want to please God. You were made by God's image and likeness. And you received blessing, the blessing to be a fruitful person, fertile person, to govern, to dominate. So govern, rule it. In Jesus' name, keep focused on the right thing. Seeking God first, but God first. Draw near to God. Praise God, worship God with your life. This is a sabbatical time. It's the time that we throw ourselves, the beginning of the year, we throw ourselves with all our strength. In this time, we seek, we do fasts. There are seven fasts. Seven is the number of perfection and fullness. We take possession of shalom. That is a well-structured life, blessed life. We take possession of the best year of our lives. We take possession of the blessing. We believe and we prophesy that this year will be the best of our lives so far. And that's why one year is better than another, because we provide conditions. 
we believe, we prophesy, we ask for God to show us what we haven't been seeing. Lord, turn my darkness into light. Help me to see. We want to see. We want to understand things that we haven't been understanding. We want to align ourselves with you, Lord, because we know that all things are possible for those who believe, that all things are possible in God. So, outside in the world may be a chaos, but who is hidden in the shelter of the Most High, in the Almighty, it's in a safe place because God is our security. The world may be desperate with terrible news, terrible provisions, but we believe in double portion because 2024 is 12 times two. So 12 disciples, 12 tribes, 12 doors. I believe in double portion of blessings, victories. I believe in advances, great advances, in great things, of dreams that we have been waiting for, maybe for a whole life, being realized, promises of a lifetime, because the conquest of the promised land was a promise of lives, actually, of generations. Generations waited, expected for that generations waited for that moment, for the moment of the conquest of the land. And we see it wasn't with a snap of the fingers. It was with perseverance, determination, faith, surrender, and keeping, strictly keeping the instructions which were commanded. We see that who gave victory wasn't the bow, the spear, or the sword. It was God. So get up with faith in Jesus' name and do like Joshua. Align yourself with God. Provide conditions for God because the battle belongs to the Lord. He will give you victory. What you can't do, God can. What you don't have, God has. What you can't, God can all things. Don't limit the power of the Lord. Nothing is too difficult to God or impossible. All we have to do is align ourselves with Him, is to continue in His presence, focused diligently, seeking His presence every day. Look, the alignment of Joseph began at the Jordan, east of the springs of Jericho, and went up from there through the desert into the hill country of Bethel. It went on from Bethel, that is Luz, crossed over to the territory of the Erkites in Etheroth, descended westward to the territory of the Jephalites, as far as the region of Lower Beth Horon, and on to Gezer, ending at the Mediterranean Sea. So Manasseh and Ephraim, the descendants of Joseph, Joseph, received their inheritance. This was the territory of Ephraim, according to its clans. The boundary of the boundary of their inheritance went from Etheroth, Eder, in the, in the east to Upper Beth Horon, and continued to the Mediterranean Sea from Mikmethath on the north. It curved eastward to Tanath, Silan, passing by it to Genoa, Genoa on the east. Then it went down from Genoa to Eteroth and Nara, touched Jericho and came out at the Jordan. From Tapua, the border went west to the Cana Ravine and ended at the Mediterranean Sea. This was the inheritance of the tribe of the Ephraimites, according to its clans. It also included all the towns, look, all the towns and their villages that were set aside for the Ephraimites within the inheritance of the Menasites. They didn't dislodge 
the Canaanites living in Gezer. To this day, the Canaanites live among the people of Ephraim, but are required to do forced, la forced labor. So look, yesterday, I, I read for you and talked to you that Judah couldn't dislodge the Jebusites. But then I read for you the list, the huge list of conquests of territories that they conquered, towns, and then they couldn't. How? No. Their leader, many time after, we will find David, driving the Jebusites out, conquering. Why? Because he believed. He believed. He believed in what the Lord had said. Look, this territory I have already delivered to you. Here, I read for you that the sons of Joseph received their inheritance. And with all that were promised, were delivered to them, was delivered to them. You will see that the Bible gives details. You see that the Bible gives details. Look, that territory is started there and finished there. You see details here. Everything well determined. This is for you. You see that God is a God of details. You have to take seriously nothing. Not even one scripture is here without a reason. You see the details that the Holy Spirit left here. It goes and comes until this point, and then it, it, it makes a curve, and then it goes up. And you see here the details, the territory of Joseph's sons. And it enchants me. Because it's the Holy Spirit saying to me, look as I receive, Kyle, what I have for you, believe, persevere, don't limit the power of God, because I will give you with details. And look, the territory that is for you, your inheritance, it's yours. Everything you have to do is to believe, I will deliver to you, because I will deliver to you, and anything will be be left out. I will deliver to you. Now, all of these could be delivered just because it was conquered. Because they fought. Because they went to the war. Did you understand? They did they, their part. They did what they have to do. They cooperated. And when we cooperate with God, God can do His part. How will I take possession of my inheritance if I don't go to the battle? How could Joseph's sons take possession of their territory, their inheritance, if they didn't have fight the, the right battles before? And God gave victory. Because who gives victory is God. You prepare the horse, but who gives the victory is God. Who gives the victory is God. It's very clear. The Lord said, it wasn't. It wasn't the bow, the spear, the sword that gave victory to you. It means that they used the bow. They used the sword. They used the spear. They went to the battle. But who gave the victory was God. So I use the weapons that I have. I go to the battle, but with the certainty that who will give me victory? It's God. So I provide conditions for God to give me victory. I align myself with Him, aligning myself with Him, and doing what I have to do. So I know how to use the spear. I know how to use the sword. I know how to use the bow. I will use what I know. I'll face what I have to face and what I can do. God will do. So, 
they were there receiving all their territory, right? But then there is a part very similar with the part of Judah. Look, they didn't dislodge the Canaanites. Look, here is not written as the as the Judah tribe. They couldn't. What doesn't fit? Because with a great victor like that, and now and now they wouldn't do it, wouldn't be able to do it. They simply didn't put the same faith, the same strength. They didn't dislodge the Canaanites. Here they don't say they couldn't. Say that they didn't. It means that they neglected it. Oh no, but there is no problem. We put them to to do forced labor, you know. But to this day, the Canaanites live among the people of Ephraim, but are required to do forced labor. Yeah, but it wasn't what the Lord said. You know, that thing that we go over, that small situation that we live there, that enemy, that seems to be not so dangerous. No, it's not so necessary to deal and to remove it and remove it from our lives. You know that situation that we still can't tell the story, a little story for, our, for ourselves. No, but I left it here. But they will have to work. They will be required to do forced labor. We have control over them. Yes, but it wasn't what God said. It, it wasn't at all. God said, I have already delivered the land. Dry them out, because if you leave them there, they will be a trap for you. Later. And then, if you read in the, the, in the book of Judges, in the chapter 2, you see the Lord harshly correcting them and saying, Listen, didn't I say to you to drive them out? Well... When you had grace, favor, to drive them out, to remove from your lives that problem that I had already given the, the order, grace, the, the direction, you left it. It means you didn't put the strength necessary, needed. You didn't are diligent in this part. Well... Now they will be a trap for you. And they were. They were. What a horrible thing. Horrible thing. Because you read and you see one problem after another. And the people groaning. And generations and more generations lost. Why? Because these concessions that people make bring problems. And serious problems. That moment that we have, that portal, you know, that the Lord puts in front of us and say, it's now. We have to enjoy it. And when we don't enjoy it, there later, the problem we don't solve in that moment will be uh, early or later, we'll have to deal with that. I always say, it's no use, but you sow, you will reap. It's no use. What you hide has power over you. What you don't deal with will burst in your face. What you don't fix will come against you with a lot of strength. Because when you have a portal opened, you have grace to deal with that. But if you wait that portal to close, it won't be easier. And you'll have to deal with this any time. And what you left, and the Lord said, don't leave it. Drive it out of your life. Remove it. It will turn back against you. So you'll see here that look how many conquests Such important territory was delivered to them. There were delivered blessings for their lives. 
but they left something small that it wasn't small. They left something that, oh no, but that's okay. We put them to do forced work, labor, and it will work, and it won't be a problem. But the Lord have already said, many time ago, it will be a problem. You have to dry them out. You have to remove. I'm giving grace. Don't, le don't leave anything there. Don't let any issue remain. Don't let the Canaanites there. No. The Lord have already said, remove it. Dry them out. Deal with it. Remove from your life. I'm giving you grace. Deal with it. Don't leave it there. And then you see, all of this conquest so important. In the end, we will see later the size, the impact of loss and damage. Because it didn't feed. After many conquests, they leave some things behind. They didn't drive out. Did you understand? It didn't fit there. That's why there were several problems for them and lost. They suffered it. So look, it's time for you to live the fulfillment of your promises. Conquest territories. God will deliver your inheritance. But don't let anything, anything, of what God commanded you to deal, deal with. What God commanded you to remove. Don't deceive yourself. Don't leave, don't leave it there. No, that's okay. It doesn't have any problem. They will, we have control. They will be submitted. Look, to, to do forced labor and that's okay. No, don't under, underestimate the enemy. Don't underestimate. Deal with things. Is there any character deviation? Is there any attitude, behavior that it's clearly that is an enemy that it will that it will harm you, damage you later? Is there any attitude that you are still allowing? Oh, it's not so bad. God won't God won't matter with it. God doesn't matter with it. I will let the Canaanites here. He will. Because it will come against you. God knew that if he left one enemy, only one enemy, later they would have problems. So God, when he commands us to do something, it's because he loves us. He doesn't want to take anything from us. He wants to deliver us of future problems. Do you know that Father, who knows something that we don't know, He was in the future. He knows very well things. He knows what is the end of that. He comes and say, don't leave it there. Deal with it. Dry them out. Because He knows no, it will come against you. Turn against you. It was against them. And God knew they would suffer. So, we need to analyze our lives. Maybe, look, look the size of the inheritance. What a wonderful thing. But they left one thing that became a great, a huge damage for them. I know that God is talking to you. God has a great inheritance for you, a great victory. But what are you leaving there? What are you uh, sleeping by? What does this Canaanite mean? These Canaanites, what does it mean? What have you been sleeping by and you think you have control? No, no. Look, it will be, they will work for us. They will work. We'll put them to do forced labor. And that's okay. We have the control. No. When God says no, it's no. God said, dry them out. I'm giving grace. I'm here, I'm with you. Now it's the time. Remove it, dry them out. It doesn't fit to leave anything here. Not even one enemy. But maybe they 
didn't see as an enemy. And there is the problem of many people. Don't see a problem as a great problem, an enemy as an enemy. Sometimes the person doesn't see, they think that, that it doesn't matter, and they make a concession. There later that will explode in their lives. In Jesus' name, remove these Canaanites and leave, experience your inheritance. Enjoy what God has for you. Listen to the Spirit's voice because God has promises of a lifetime for you. And what you know, God have already said, remove it. Because Canaanites don't fit in your life, in your territory. It doesn't fit. The Lord said, no, no, but you know, no, no, but it's because we're going to put them to do forced labor. The Lord saying, no, you won't. He said, remove it. It may seem isn't a great problem that it's delivered, that you already overcame it, but it will be a great problem later. What God has for you is something great and it doesn't fit Canaanite in this territory that the Lord has given to you. If you believe, desire, and want to pray with me, prepare something you want to receive prayer for. I'll be right back to pray with you. Senhor, meu Deus e meu... Lord, my God and my Father, I pray for each life that is with me. I ask, Lord, that may this word has given to this person discernment, clarity. May they perfectly comprehend what you are saying, speaking with them. It's clear that you have an, a beautiful, wonderful, great life for them to work, to pour out, to deliver. And it doesn't feed concessions. They can't relativize. They can't simply live, follow a feeling, a sentimental thought, draw their own conclusions, tell a story for them that is against what you said, Lord, that they can have control. That's what Satan wants them to believe, that they have control. That's not quite like that that you won't matter about it but you Lord take seriously your word and if you and if you said no it's no and you're saying I have something great for you and it doesn't fit Canaanites in your land in your territory in your life Lord may they have to look for see what means these Canaanites in their lives Maybe it's a behavior, an attitude, something they, are, they aren't dealing with, something they are sleeping by. I don't know, but I pray so that you may but turn their darkness into light. Bless homes, families, all who send their prayer requests. I consecrate everything and I take possession of victories, of a new time. I bless my friends and fellow sowers. I prophesy the gift of wealth, prosperity, an anointing of conquests, an anointing of ten times more. Give a mentality of wealth, Lord, because wealth is mentality. And wherever this program is reaching, may lives have already received the word, understood, and may they have already reasoned with decisions and courageous decisions. I ask for your blessing. I give my blessing. And I thank you so much for everything. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank God. The Life Helpline phone number is 5511-3296-9449. We are located at 995 Taquari Street in Sao Paulo, Brazil. It's where we are today. The best of the land service Eliakim with the cry out prayer of my conquest projects for 2024 year of Joshua's anointing focus on the right thing be in the temple see God with the, all your strength Sunday our fourth fast and so will go from glory to glory and victory to victory count on us it is a pleasure to serve and if the Lord Jesus doesn't come back I will continue here talking about life and life change 
Have a nice day. Amen.